Welcome to America in Focus, powered by the Center Square. I'm Dan McCaleb, executive editor of the Center Square Newswire Service. Joining me again today is Casey Harper, the Center Square's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief. We are recording this on Friday, April 28th. Casey, the country is facing a looming debt ceiling crisis. Republicans have announced plans for what they would agree to if they were to uh, increase the debt ceiling. President Biden wants nothing to do with the Republicans' plans. Tell us a little bit about it. You know, we are coming down to a very serious deadline, and it seems like we are just as far apart from any kind of agreement as we were, you know, two months ago when Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, was warning about the impact of if we miss this deadline. So what is the deadline? Well, the um, federal law basically sets a cap on how much debt the U.S. government can have. Uh, right now, you know, we're over $31 trillion, but not to $32 trillion. And so that's we're, we're butting up against that cap. The Treasury um, Department, as accountants somehow can do, is taking what they call extraordinary measures to keep us from defaulting and doing different things to buy us time, uh, moving money around. But they're not only going to be able to do that so long. We're really down to the wire. And so Congress has to pass and Biden sign an increase to the debt limit. Now, Republicans with their new House majority are saying, yeah, we'll increase the debt limit, but spending's out of control. Inflation is, you know, of course, been raging because of all the spending. We'll, we'll raise the debt limit. We don't want to default, but we're going to have to cut, do some spending cuts. And Biden has said, uh, no, we're not doing any spending cuts. We're not negotiating on this. This is basically too important um, to get caught up in negotiations and risk defaulting on the debt. And so these two sides are kind of at a standoff. The Senate, of course, is more moderate than the, the House Republicans, but they have, I would say, more influence with the president. So it'll be interesting to see. But House Republicans passed their bill, their debt ceiling increase. You know, rough sketch of it is it it cuts, you know, spending so by almost five trillion dollars in spending. It raises the debt limit by about um, about one point five trillion or until March 31st, whichever comes first. Right. So we'll be back in this again in election year, which is an interesting thing. Maybe we can talk about in a moment, you know, how re- revisiting this in election year could play out. But it cuts spending. It, it buys us uh, basically a year or one point five trillion dollars increase to the debt limit. It puts things like work requirements um, it, for some social programs like Medicaid recipients will need to work about you know 20 hours a week, uh, which is something Republicans really push for. What are some of the other spending cuts that Republicans want? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it for example, uh, there's all, well, there's the tax stuff, too. So it, it um, rolls back a lot of the climate and um, energy environmental tax credits that were put in place in the Inflation Reduction Act, which Republicans are very excited about. But the, the very thing they're excited about is what Biden was not happy about, right? Because he just worked really hard to pass these Inflation Reduction Act tax credits as part of his climate change and green initiative, a green economy kind of initiative. And so now this debt ceiling is coming around. Republicans are just basically trying to undo so many of these tax credits he put in place. So that's a good example of one of these things that it's hard to see how they'll reconcile because Biden just spent so much political capital passing it. And, and here and now it's trying to be overturned. So, you know, I don't know how, how they're going to meet on this, but they have to. I mean, if they really have to. Biden wants just a clean debt limit um, increase one, you know, just ex- kick it down the road, uh, road another year. And the Republicans are saying, no, we need to do something about this. So one of the other proposals is that um, it would essentially block Biden's student loan cancellation plan where he wants to forgive um, up to $10,000 in student loans uh, for some borrowers and up to 20000 for others. That's, of course, been another contentious issue between the Biden White House and Republicans uh, in Congress. So, I mean, what's next? I mean, obviously, the Republicans have put forward their plan. Biden says, no way. We're running out of time here, right? Yeah, we are. And uh, they've, they've got to come to something. I mean, there's going to be a lot of backroom deals. Now, ultimately, this is going to be, I think, McCarthy's biggest test. You know, he, you know, we covered very closely at the com his tumultuous battle to take the House speakership. Um, I think he has earned himself some credit with the uh, Republicans who put him in charge by the way he stood by some of these proposals. You know, this work requirements for Medicaid stuff is um, is pretty puts a pretty bad taste in the mouth of some of these Democrats. But he stood by it. He, he knows that probably all this stuff isn't going to make it through the final negotiations. But he did put some of what you could call wish list items from Republicans. Um, he returns discretionary you know, spending to 2022 levels. I think you, you asked about more spending cuts. It just returns some of the discretionary spending to 2022 levels and then sets it you know, for like a 1% increase, a more annualized growth thing. But so... 
McCarthy is really probably going to upset some Republicans or he's going to risk a default. This is a really probably the biggest test of his leadership so far. Can he get, you know, can he get Biden on his side? And oh, by the way, I mean, some of these Senate Republicans are pretty, um, pretty squishy. Right. So but nobody wants a default. Nobody wants to be blamed for that. And even if they do all this, it's just <laughs> next year, they're going to be right back at it. It's going to be an election year. And then there could be even more more interesting to see, you know, where do these candidates uh, weigh in? And then there's always the question on these shutdowns or default things is who's going to get blamed, Dan? Is this defaults? Who's going to get blamed? Before, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you'd probably say Republicans would get blamed. But now the Republicans passed a bill. House Republicans, they passed a bill. They cut spending, but it buys another year. I think they have shifted the pressure onto President Biden and maybe put him back on his heels a little bit because you can't just say, I'm not negotiating. Uh, that isn't, I don't think that comes across um, really good when Republicans did all this work to pass a bill. It's like, you don't like our bill. What's your plan? Right. And so right now, I think the pressure is is on Biden. Listeners can keep up with the debt ceiling battle at thecentersquare.com. For Casey Harbor, I'm Dan McCaleb. Thank you for listening.